Take one look at an emerald green golf course and it's easy to see that maintaining it requires resources. Insiders acknowledge, yes, it's a pastime, hobby, sport, lifestyle that needs water to run, but more leaders in the space are trying to be smarter about how they use it. And at one local course, a tiny tool and a major renovation changed things in a big way. We'll have a decent day out here. It got a little windy this morning, but golf is an you know, old school sport rooted in tradition. Breaking my own rules crossing. <laughs> But Edina Country Club Superintendent Brandon Schindley is modernizing at least the greens by making them more green, a process that started out of necessity. I think it was 2009. I think 90% of our putting surfaces were dead. Wow. So it was kind of like, all right, we need to do something. No choice. No choice. The overhaul included new grass. So, like, the grass on the green is called T1 creeping bent grass. Schindley says it greens up quicker in the springtime and it's hardier using less fertilizer, pesticides, and water. One of the things we're able to do now with the grasses is actually keep it drier. This, we would push this into the ground and you try to kind of go where your roots are. Was the old school method for deciding when to water the greens. But then you just feel the feel the soil and go, you know, that's that's probably pretty wet. Really the, before you were eyeballing it. I mean, yeah. this is essentially. Yeah. Not just imprecise, but messy. So yeah. Then you have to put this back in and try to make it as clean as you can so that no one knows we were here. Now, <laughs> this thing measures how saturated the ground is. We'll put this in the ground and then you hit the read button and that's telling me it's 26.2% volumetric water content. Which, which tells you? Which, after being on these greens for so long, that's wet. Taking the guesswork out. There's many times that you could see an area that's off color that looks like it's, it could be drying out and it actually might be something called like wet wilt. It's too wet. You know, when you started saying, well, we're doing this based on data. We're doing this based off of science. It, it, it kind of, oh, Okay, well that makes sense. All around the course. Another stop on our field trip. <laughs> there are systems hooked up to each sprinkler head. This is a weather station that you know we have on site. And a weather station that tracks rainfall that communicates back to Shindley's office. Every one of these little black squares is all is an individual sprinkler head on the golf course. If it rains, they'll turn off, and each sprinkler head can be tweaked to only use what's needed. The last two years has really shown that you really have to be in tune with where you need to put water. A system that can serve while improving the game. I think we've also proven they're getting better playability out of the golf course um, by using less water and you know more firm and fast fairways. I think there, there will be at times some water restrictions that are going to come. Um, just because it's such a valuable commodity and, you know, we want to be a partner in that. Other courses use, um, you know, what they're working with to their advantage, essentially, Jeff. So they use retention ponds in some places to capture stormwater, runoff as well, and then they use that to irrigate. They do that out at Presswick Golf Club in Woodbury, and the city actually collaborated on that. They said, hey, we need somewhere to put this water. Um, and so it's an example of people working together to come up with solutions that covers like 10 to 20 percent of what they use I'm in sure, a year. I'm sure they would have liked to get a little bit more rain, but even a little bit goes a long way yeah. if you're taking advantage of what Mother Earth's giving you. Definitely top of mind with the last few summers we've had. Uh, exactly. <laughs>